Hello everyone. So we've already talked about this little screen over here in a previous video, so I'm not going to talk about that one again, but I would like to talk about the larger screen today and what we can do to make it work, just for the fun of it. So just as in, in the previous video on the smaller screen, I still have the window connected to these, these points. So those are still the chip selects as before, and these two are the um, signal lines. And the this line here just turns on the backlighting and controls the brightness of the backlighting. That is an HT1622 chip, and this is the HT1625 chip. And it's this chip that we are addressing to talk to the, the large LCD, which is between these two sets of pins. You may not be able to see this particularly well on the screen, but we'll give this a go. So if you look carefully, you'll see that these pins are all connected by these traces to the LCD on this side, and all of these pins are all connected to the LCD on this side. There's a few that are connected from here to these, and another, another one or two, I think, that are up here that are connected as well. So using a... Um, digital multimeter. I've checked out or rung out each one of these wires and discovered that we are missing one particular um, uh, address line and we'll talk about that later. But at the moment all of the COM lines which are the well one set of the addressing and all of the except for one of the address lines are connected to the LCD. Okay so having a quick look at the documentation for the HD1625. We'll notice that it has 64 by 8. Nah, try again. 64 by 8 um, and address lines. So 8 com lines and 64 address lines. And it creates a 512 elements that one can that one can access on the screen. We're not using all of those, but we're using just over half. So going down to the block diagram, just referring back to looking at the address lines, you'll see that all the COM lines are down the left. I pointed those out. And all the segment lines or address lines are up on the right and the top. So we have all of those except for 17, I think it was, that's missing and it's not connected to anything. So if you look at the functional description for the HT1625, um, it tells you here that we have 128 by 4 bits of data in, and that's the way that the RAM is organized and that's directly mapped onto the screen. And so from this RAM mapping diagram you can see that to write to segment 0 you need two address lines 0 and 1 plus you need four bits of data in each so to write to segment 0 for example you need a combination of two address lines in this case 0 and 1 and you need four bits of data in each address line and the combination of all of those will give you a total of 128 by 4 okay so once I knew that we had uh, two addresses for every element that's on the screen and each of those needed four data bits I could then go along and work out which each one of them, which which segment or what the address is I suppose of every one of these elements are on the screen now for the simplicity of this of this case the this is I don't call that a segment that little item or any one of these lit up um, parts I call them elements uh, for the so that I can distinguish them between the segment lines, I suppose, and um, a thing like a like a, a number. So every one of these items are an element on the screen on the LCD. So having got hold of all of those, I then went and put. I then went and cycled through every single one of the address lines using my Arduino program, which is a slightly modified version of Marty's previous version, and 
and labeled every single one of them. And this pattern you might notice is starts here one, ten, hundred, thousand. Well, it's actually in hex, and they just repeat address wise to the right. So all of those addresses has a particular pattern across, and the the heart, the word pulse, the word time, and the word speed, and all of the digits, including the, the colon and the decimal points, all have their own individual addresses. And the way I've set them up is to have the address on the top row and the data bits on the lower row. So if you wanted to light up those four, for example, then you'd have for that address, you would have the data would be one, 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 which is simply the sum of those four addresses. The same with these and so on. So just to reiterate, I'm not looking at that as a digit I'm, or a number. I'm looking at that as seven addresses and the eighth one is this decimal point. So just to add the, a bit more clarity I suppose around all of this, I, that circuit I've drawn out the schematic of it all uh, by painstakingly uh, tracking each trace and ringing it out with the multimeter. And it has a, a PIC18F45J10 and that drives an output, or sorry, it has inputs from these two which come from the controller board and it has a bunch of outputs over here which drive the controller board and allow it to turn on, turn off and what have you. Sending the user sending up and down signals on the incline on board or speed up and down on those and those are just assumed by my case, from my case. This is the power supply that comes in from the from the power supply board that controls the motor of this treadmill and it has a 12 volt regulator sorry a 5 volt regulator ends up with 5 volt and then later on the board because this pick is only 3.3 volt it has a step down to 3.3 volts then the LEDs um, in this batch here are the background backlighting LED display LEDs and they're controlled by this pin on the on the pick so I'm driving at the moment, I'm driving the LEDs from, from this point here and the, I've removed the pick so it doesn't actually control anything at the moment. None of these circuits for the sake of them, they are playing on the LCD, none of these circuits actually work. So what do we got? That's the, the HT1622 circuit, that's the power supply that comes in, that's the chip select, write and data lines, they come in onto the 1622 and you can control the screen of 15 digits, um, 14 segments each. And then this is the larger screen that's on that LCD, well, a larger LCD on the, on the screen holding panel PCB. And um, it has one extra little feature, and that is still got the chip select write and data lines which are shared, and it has the no, sorry, the chip select is unique to this chip. And it has an output buzzer. And I'll demonstrate that to you in a minute. So this is the, um, the treadmill that this thing coming from. It has a set of buttons which are up and down. And then it has a set of buttons which are for the speed control. And some of these buttons mimic those as well. That's the larger LCD. That's a smaller LCD. And then it has a bunch of power on, off speed increase, blah blah blah, various other buttons at the bottom here. And so those external daughter boards I've mapped out here so for what it's use, for what it's worth. So each one of those, each one of these sockets is mapped to one of these sockets. I hope that's useful to somebody. So to get the address and data bits for each of these elements on the screen, I've modified Mighty's code and just added a bit of information about the um, the large LCD, added in some more of the control codes that it has. Notice that I've got the, the tone code here. Then we have the chip select line for this, for the large LCDs on pin 10. The write and data bits are on pin 12 and 13. 
and the small screen is on pin 11 so I can turn that on at the moment and that's why you can see both of them are lit up at the moment. I just defined for the sake of the exercise the top address is 81 which is segment 40 so I said here and the backlight pin is on pin 9 so that I can drive it with an Arduino BMW PWM and, and to um, reduce the brightness a bit. Anyway that's where Marty's code, you can look through that at your leisure. That's uh, some more bits that we need to do and then I took that information that I had on the spreadsheet and I created this um, table to write the to the digits as, as a number rather than as a set of four addresses and the heart and the pulse and time and speed and colon each have functions and then um, wrote to them okay so I use this test elements which is actually test uh, no that's right test elements um, subroutine to go along and find every single one of those and I wrote the the address to the serial data and then waited for me to go and click OK and then it will display the next element and that's that's what it did that's what I did with this bit of text uh, did a bit of code and that worked fine to go along and pick them all up so I display the address and then display the data that I was sending to it which is this bit of data and then left it there till I till like pressed OK and then it did the next one and then, then I recorded that onto the screen. It took me about two or three hours to go, go through all of them. Maybe not that quite that long. This bit of code here is just to go along and do some backlighting on the screen and well can't remember what that bit of code does anymore, but anyway, it's um, it has its uses. And then I went through this loop here. It puts a pulse on. It, this is where they, they turn on the various elements, and you can turn them on and off at will using that. Those. Okay, so just uploading that to the Arduino so that it will display it on the on the screen. Then you'll see that it how it oh, got to turn the display on. So it run, the code runs up the screen. You can just see that it's actually the eighth line, not the, the two at the bottom. Now it's working its way across this way again, and it works through each the whole of the digit. And then eventually it stops here, does those four last ones. Oh, that's the highest address. It's a bit confusing, but anyway, that's the way it is. I see that my my display rate is a little faster than what my camera can actually pick up and hence it disappears and looks so fuzzy okay anyway enough of that this is the RAM mapping for the HD1622 chip first of all notice that there are only six bits for the address lines and there are four bits for the data lines so if I wanted to address this element on the LCD screen and assuming that each one of these boxes is an element on the um, LCD that can be lit up let's say I wanted to put um, to like that element then I would need to get a combination of segment 3 and COM7 and that translates to D3 on address 1. So we're only using the lower four bits of an 8 bit data structure that we get from the Arduino. So I'm only going to be writing to the lower four bits ever. Now, if we have a look at the 1625, just confirming that's a 1625, you might notice that there are now seven bits in the address register I suppose and we still have the four bits in the data bit in the data structure so 
once again, if that's an element on the LCD, then I need a combination of segment 0 and COM7 lit up, which means I need to put a 1 in D3 zeros in the rest, if those are off, and address 1. Just recapping a little bit, um, for the 1622, I did a font and I talked about how the addressing, well, I tried to talk about how the addressing worked, and the command summary, some timing diagrams, the command summary and timing diagrams are the same for the 1622 and the 1625, and then for the 1625, as it's configured on this PCB with this LCD, and it'll be different for other LCDs, I'll just make a note here to say that the, the data is 128 by 4 bits. 128 in decimal is uh, 7 bits wide. And because my screen, this LCD, has 258 elements on the LCD, we only need 40 segment lines, which then translates to 81 address lines. So I've made a table which gives me the data bits, all the COM lines, and all the segment lines, much the same as that other table. And then above 40, because there's nothing connected to those lines uh, on the actual chip, I've just crossed them off and put the ones and what have you, you know, gave them the addresses but crossed them out because I'm not using those. Then, in this case, I've got an address, high address of, in other words, the, going back to, the high address would be this byte and the low address is that, well, nibble actually. So that'll be the low address, which is address low, and as you can see, they're all zeros. And then one is the high address, which is the left hand side of that image. And the data bits are, in this case, is one triple zero, which gives me a uh, the element on the top left hand corner will be illuminated. In other words, that element there. Or that's connected to that. And going across, it's the middle one, and that's the left one, and the right hand side, and so on, and so on, and so on. So, line or segment line 18 is not connected on this LCD either, and so I've crossed that line out as a useless uh, number. And these are the, the address lines, low and high, of the RAM. And they go all the way to 81. And then I've given colors to the various components that are on the LCD as in groups. You can see across this map, I suppose, of the data bits. These are the data bits in the two sets of addresses versus the address lines, with what is connected to what, and how they are grouped. So that little group of 25 and 26 will be one set of elements, I suppose, in the form of a digit on, a, on the screen somewhere. So. I've taken 25 and 26 as an example, and that's those, those are the digits I'm talking about. So the left digits are represented by the addresses and data groups that are like that, which is a straight copy out of out of the table over there. And then if we deconstruct that data into hex, then we end up with a table looking like that, with the address of the of those of one of those digits since there's three the address of one of those digits which I think is the left one is 43 and 45 so if we then structure the that into a table in C terms we end up with a double a table with or an array within an array that looks like that and then if we apply a font to those seven digits 
uh, sorry, seven elements. That looks like that to make it into numbers. Then we can decompose and eventually we end up with the address with seven six three seven six, which gives the various mappings of those elements that are lit and, and what have you. And then that translate I've taken that and put that into my Arduino code to address one of those characters, I suppose, or digits as a number rather than as a set of of elements that need to be separately lit up. Well, just to make it a little bit easier, I suppose. I'm going to make this spreadsheet with the 1622 and the 1625 plus the code all available on my GitHub repository which I'll link to in the description below. So if you want to go have a look at that in more detail then feel free and have a look and browse and do whatever you want with it. Um, hopefully this lot is useful to somebody to go and figure out how this thing works and also um, as a hobby is to make stuff work that um, that you remove from something else, like in this case the displays off the uh, treadmill. Anyway, so it's been fun going along and composing this chart and getting all the address lines and if you fancy let me know what you've used it for, I'd be, I'd be interested to have a look at what other people have done with it. And, well, have fun!